Welcome back to the Weekend Ball Podcast. Today we have a really interesting segment on the podcast because I've interviewed Raptor legend Bruno Caboclo. And we talked a little bit about his time in Toronto, uh, what he remembers about being a Raptor, as well just his time now in Europe and, and the journey that he's had to, to be where he is today. And playing for Brazil and, and and probably playing against Canada in the next round. We'll see. So Bruno was nice enough to, to give some time. And I know Raptors fans love and miss him. So uh, just a, a really nice guy was really nice off, off uh, air uh, as well. I have former assistant and NBA champion coach with the Toronto Raptors, Sergio Scariolo. We talked about just his philosophy about coaching his career being with the Raptors, how he started, and it's interesting the way uh, he started in Toronto. Nick Nurse and his relationship with Nick Nurse, uh, they're pretty close. We talked about Jordy Fernandez, Canada basketball coach. He actually came and, and stopped by as we were taping, uh, so just be mindful of that. Uh, and as well, just his relationship with Kyle Lowry, his relationship with Marcus Saul, uh, being a, the Spanish coach, and then uh, as well looking forward to Canada. Uh, at the end, you'll see there's a little tidbit about how we found out he didn't get the Raptors job this time as a head coach, as they went with Darko Ryalkovich. So, yeah, fans, uh, I think you'll really like this and uh, hope you enjoy and like, rate, review, and, and follow my podcast as well, Behind the Play. Um, and I, uh, so thanks to everyone that has supported this show. Um, thank you so much. Always feel free to reach out. Um, always appreciate the support and uh, definitely a big week on the podcast. I, so um, stay tuned and let's hope Canada makes the Olympics. About kind of just what you remember about being in Toronto and your experience there for the Rockets. Um, I remember everything. Kind of. Um, Do you have like a memory that stands out for you playing for the Raptors? Um, I think it was the first time I, I got there. Um, I was very young and when experiencing in that world, I think uh, that was the biggest memory I have. Arriving in, in Toronto on the airport uh, in the middle of the island close to the city. Um, it was a very booty city. I arrived in the summer, so that was very amazing for me. And the treatment that I had from the fans and the whole time I had there was really grateful. I'm really grateful for it. I know Masai kind of talked about how he kind of let you down just personally. What do you think maybe didn't go as well in Toronto, just on the court for you? Um, I think I understand now better than before. I think uh, I got there in a generation where Toronto had to do very well. They had uh, very good players there. And I was very young, so I don't think they they would risk uh, something playing me at the time. But um, I felt that maybe I, I could be ready to to play those years uh, when I was there, maybe the third year forward. But unfortunately, I couldn't have I couldn't play very much for the the team. But I'm very grateful for everything I learned uh, with the coaches, uh, Jersey House as well, being there. So this helped me through my career. So. Well, talk about just where you are now, like your journey. Like, how do you feel about where you are in terms of your own game? And I know you've been playing really well for Brazil. You won player of the game. Just tell us about your game now. Maybe that's changed from Toronto to, to now. I think right now uh, I got a lot of experience. Everything I learned from the years before has uh, been helping me so far. Uh, these last three years, uh, I think I've been having my best basketball, and it's going like uh, going going up. Uh, and I'm keep pushing myself. I think uh, this next few years is gonna be very good for me. So I'm very focused, and I still trying to play the best league I can and the best teams I can and I'll keep doing that. And, and what's it like been playing for Brazil and you won the player of the game yesterday and just what's it been like when you get to play for Brazil? Uh, it's, it's great. Uh, I just play with my friends. Uh, we used to play together when we were younger and, 
And now being here is just something greater and play for the country is always like um, you can't understand very much. It's always bigger. You, you feel like you want to be here and World Cup. Oh, Olympics is the great tournament that you want to be in. Who's kind of close friends on the team for you? Uh, when I was younger, I started playing for Lucas Diaz. Uh, Iago was younger, I always keep following him. But uh, now I'm closer to Iago, Lucas Diaz, Jorginho, because they from the same generation and we grew together. And, and with that, what's, how would you describe your role on this team for Brazil? I think the a big energy, the motor of the team. Uh, I think uh, I can put myself in situations that I will be out of the court. I uh, got to be always available because I think uh, I help them a lot in defense and offense. And I need to hold myself accountable to be available um, all times. With that, I, when I was watching your game, the first game, you had a lot of rim runs, like off screen rolls. Is that something that's kind of new to your game or, or in the past couple of years being in Europe? Um, when I started playing center, there was something that... When did you start playing center? Was, um, I think, last year with the 905. Okay. I think because they didn't have... I, I, was, I, was, I was one of the tallest guys in the team. And they didn't have bigs, so they started putting me as a four. Then after as a five and was working, so the only thing I, I had to work on was on my weight. Okay. And I still be doing that, trying to increase my weight. But right now it's pretty good. Uh, then yeah, so with that uh, it's easier for me because uh, I still have a mindset as a wing, but I'm playing as a center and I always trying to make smart plays. And with my ring runs, I get the guys outside uh, open shots or get the defenders tired so that's a good strategy and with that do you prefer playing center compared to the wing or is it kind of just that's what the team wants and that's what you the position you play uh, if i could um, i would like more wing but um i like center as well but i think if it has a true center to do that part i think uh, i can add even more playing other other positions um, What's kind of the biggest challenge playing center compared to the wing for you? I think playing some of uh, very skilled guys, like um, I have guarded um, Jokic. Yeah. He's very, he's much heavier than me and very skilled. So how was a, that? Uh, how, how did it feel to, to be uh, guarding Jokic? It was a good experience. Um, I still, I'm athletic, so I still can try block shots or change shots. But um, he's way heavier than me, so I, I could imagine it that it would be hard guarding those guys like him, um, Joel Embiid, those type of guys. I think I need to get my weight, weight up and get a little more stronger. But the rest of the guys, uh, I've been fine. And, and with that, I'll, just before I let you go, just obviously Canada's here and I'm, I'm with the Raptors. Uh, just what what would it mean to, or what would it be, what have you kind of seen in the Canadian team so far? And if you are to play them and maybe in the second round. So, sorry, can you ask it again? Yeah, sure. So obviously Canada's here as well and you might play them in the second round. What have you kind of thought about their their team so far and in the tournament and, and the guys they have? Uh, it's very, it's very, very good team. Uh, have a lot of NBA players, so they play... Yeah. A uh, little different style of the other players that play uh, overseas, but um, Shea, Shea be playing amazing, and with the other guys uh, beside of him, they have a very good team that can get that can play for the for medals on the World Cup. Do you know anyone on the team personally on the Canadian team? Oh uh, yeah, I know Shea, Dylan Brooks, uh, almost most everybody, and some I played overseas as well, uh, played with. Uh, so basically, I know the whole team, kind of. Oh, oh, cool. Well, thank you so much. Bro. Thank I you. really appreciate it. No, no, two minutes. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bruno. I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation with me and Bruno. He was fantastic as always. Uh, definitely miss him. Uh, he's been playing really play well, well for... Brazil, if people don't know, he's playing as a center, as you mentioned, and was player of the game in the first game uh, they played when they played Iran. So uh, all the best to Bruno. And next up is my uh, conversation with uh, Sergio Scariolo.
So thanks, Sergio. So I just want to ask you first. Um, I know you're in Hustle, uh, the movie. How good of an actor are you compared to a coach? <laughs> Well, you should uh, ask to, you know, to, to the ones who had the chance to to see the movie and to see that. But uh, hopefully, hopefully, much worse. Was it fun to be on? The it was fun because uh, the, the the overall atmosphere was really fun. Uh, I had never been on a on a shooting set before, so and. Uh, and Adam was was great because he's a great basketball person. I mean, he's how good fun. this game? He's, he can play. Yeah. He can definitely play. He's, he's and he knows everything. He was <laughs> he was aware of everything. And uh, when we won the European Championship, he reached out to oh, really? to, to say congrats. Oh. And uh, and of course with Juancho, yeah. uh, he got close. And I mean, it was a great experience. What a fun experience! Yeah. Um, was basically one day shooting. Okay. But uh, it was fun. Did you practice kind of before? Well, we, we repeated the, the, the couple of scenes <laughs> 20 times. Okay, okay. For different lights, different perspective, different angles. Uh, but Did you that have to do your hair a bit more? <laughs> no, no, no. That that was... Uh, I had to to wear different, different clothes. Okay. But uh, it was basically go there and start trying yeah and I want to go just to your to your coaching career obviously you've been coaching for a long long time what kind of drew you to, to becoming a coach and what do you love about it well basically an injury basically a ten, a Achilles oh. injury which slowed down my my playing career which is probably which was probably not gonna have any anywhere uh, <laughs> excellent but uh, definitely slow it down I started uh, coaching kids during my rehab mm -hmm. and then I kept you know playing and coaching for a while and then I I kept coaching and uh, I became professional very extremely early at 23 mm -hmm. I was already I was already coaching full-time last year right in Brescia, yeah, yes, yeah. My, my own town. Yeah. 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 And, and um, just with that, like, what do you think are some of the things, like if, you, if you're talking to a coach and they ask you, Sergio, I want to be a good coach, what do I need to do? What makes a good coach in your mind? Well, first of all, you have to feel uh, kind of an inner, inner call, you know, like mm -hmm. a vocation. This is a vocational uh, profession. Uh, it's hard to become a good coach if you don't feel it like like something which is really moving you and driving you with passion and 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 uh, willingness to, to to sacrifice to spend lot of hours, lot of time to, to learn to study to improve and and even going through bad times because mm. coaching is is a competitive activity where you can have good good, good moments or, or bad moments and you have to be really uh, balanced in a way mm. try to try to keep your how, your, how do you do that to stay well on? basically mm, by being wrong and, <laughs> and losing losing your 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 um, uh, you know, emotional control at times, and learning that is that was probably making everything worse. Mm. And then working with yourself, working with professionals, because I I did it. The people who really teach you to control your 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 emotion, to be to to uh, put things in perspective, mm -hmm. because in this in, in in sports like a win. Sometimes looks like uh, you know being in the in the moon and the yeah. loss, like being in hell, is never like this. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of things you you should do with yourself and also why not with the help of professionals to to keep a balance, to be to be in control, basically mm -hmm. to be emotionally uh, able to stay away as more as you can from up and downs. Yeah. 
How do you feel you've maybe improved? Like, obviously, you've been coaching for so long, but do you still feel now you can still improve, and, and how so? Yeah, because I, I, I still feel that I can make mistakes, and immediately after, I, I uh, try to tell myself what I should have done and, and, and to make sure that picture uh, gets mm-hmm. stored yeah. in my mind and, 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 uh, and that's the, let's say, make it, make it more uh, respectable mm-hmm. uh, that when you face the same situation later on, you might be able to manage it in the right way. Yeah. And, and I want to go to the Raptors a little bit, but just you, you've been a head coach for so long, but then you go to an assistant coach. What kind of challenge is that for you, and what, how does your kind of role change as an assistant coach? Obviously, you're not the head coach and making the final decision, but... Well, um, my goal going to, to, to the NBA was to uh, you know learn a different a different way of uh, of uh, you know the game. running the sport a different a little bit different game you have the, the different systems players habits uh, methodology um, and stay away for a few times from what is let's let's say uh, a little bit external to the game itself mm. because a head coach got to deal with uh, with uh, press with uh, mm. front offices with agents with uh, SL, SL colleagues which come and <laughs> yeah I will yeah, I, I will. Well, I will. Not too difficult. Make it better than. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To make great look greater. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Igual. No le hagas daño, pobrecito. No le hagas daño que luego te vienen a buscar. <laughs> I wish I knew so this all this kind of stuff around, which honestly, are necessary. Mm-hmm. Are since you have to deal with that, you do get to try to do it in the right way mm-hmm. as well. You cannot say, "No, I'm not like him. I'm this is not why I decided to coach." So I do it in in a wrong way because so that, this is gonna harm you. So is that more like for the players? You mean you're talking about, or is that as an assistant coach? Like, a- no, 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 no. Because the head coach yeah. must deal with. 300 different things which which are around the game but are not the game itself. An assistant coach can really focus on the game mm-hmm. for most part of his, of his time, right? And this is what I was looking for. Just have a full immersion in a game during, during X number of years and, and it was extremely helpful. I, I, I feel that I definitely improved um, as a coach. I saw things from a different perspective. I gave more value to, to the importance of, uh, of the players because the NBA is way, is, is way more um, players league mm-hmm. than a coaches league. Mm-hmm. So, compared to Europe. Compared to Europe, for sure. So, there is a lot of, of little or, or big things which I've been able to learn and made me made me definitely a better coach when I came back. And what's your relationship with Nick Nurse like? And, and just tell us a bit about what you maybe learned just through him. Well, um, it was a great relationship. I'm, I would be forever grateful to Nick and, of course, to, to Masai, to Bobby for the opportunity they gave me. Um, we had a previous relationship with Nick when he was coaching in, in Europe. And, uh, and, I, and you could feel that uh, Nick got the advantage of that uh, mm. quite long experience coaching in Europe because his mind was for sure more open mm. to consider things from, from a different point of views and not the typical we do this because in the NBA we do this period yeah. which is a lot there yeah. right and uh, and I still I still uh, you know keep keep um, we are in, a, in a contact. contact with the families and uh, 
and uh, and I think um, was for me extremely good that he gave me uh, right away kind of a certain amount of, uh, of space and, and uh, autonomy and, and freedom to 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 handle my area because that was immediately demanding uh, and, 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 and obliging me to force me to, to be what, what performing was, right away what was your area you well you know we that? were we were shifting from uh, from uh, um, Offense to different to special teams. We were mm. uh, basically with Nate and uh, and AG. We were rotating. At the end, during the playoff, we were basically staying with uh, me in the offense, AG with the defense, and Nate with, uh, mm -hmm. with the special teams. But that's another another extremely uh, blessing I got because in the NBA there is a kind of a tendency of label coaches like. A, Defensive coach, yeah. offensive coach, see, yeah. and, and 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 I see, and I was surprised to see also very good coaches who were basically mostly specialized in one area. I wouldn't say ignoring, but really yeah. having a lot of of lapses in other areas, and uh, and this system helped us as 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 uh, as assistant coaches to. To you know, be aware of what the team was doing from any standpoint, and actually, it's not it's not uh, by hazard that then Nate was head coach in Indiana, he is a coach in, in uh, Milwaukee. I came back as a head coach in Euroleague, so that was extremely helpful. I, I want to ask you just a little bit about that. What do you think about coaches that do specialize in, in or like the offensive coach or the defense? Like, is that a good way for coaches to go about it? Do you think, or is that more just the NBA? It's, I mean, I just, I'm just kind of curious. It's tricky because for the team itself, for the sake of the team and the, the efficiency of the team, of course, the more an assistant coach specializes in an area, the deeper he, he, he can dig and the, the more detail it can be. From the assistant coach perspective, the more he can he can, you know, you know, broaden his perspective and, and, and look at the at the different uh, you know side of basketball, that's definitely gonna improve him faster. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's uh, the question is is you should uh, How do put you it in a way or, or from one side or the other side of uh, of the table. And as well, just how how do you approach dealing with players, um, and just that kind of philosophy of how you approach them, tough, easy, or just just how do you kind of approach your relationship? Well, the the, the very beginning was extremely uh, an observative perspective. I was there and what wanted to to, to to study the situation, to watch the situation, and I remember. Uh, at, the, at the beginning, the you know, veterans or the core players the key of, of the team were barely exchanging words right mm -hmm. at the very beginning, the first weeks. Yeah. And we ended having basically every day a kind of a conversation on the game plan, on my personal view of what their task was going to be. They were coming to me uh -huh. and asking me, I'm talking about, you know, People like Kyle, Kawa. So the, the the evolution was was tricky. Was was curious because it was from like okay, no. let's see with this this big big uh, uh, you know beasts, <laughs> these yeah. legends, this how how they are. And then when you establish a mutual confident relationship, and you feel that uh, uh, basically uh, or basically they feel that you can help them. Mm. In, in a while, uh, then it becomes very normal. And, do you, and, do you and almost show that through just your work and how you treat them, or is it more just being around them longer? How does it kind of show them? Well, that that I remember that they were always telling me, hey, you are a coach, you are a head coach. This was the, 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 the expression they were, they were mm. always using towards me. And, and actually, coming from a European background, I was not really 
you know, exactly understanding what they were meaning, because in the NBA, the, the, you know, there are basically assistant coaches who are assistant coaches during their lifetime. Yeah. And, and, and there are people who become a coach, basically not having been a coach never before. Yeah. And that, that this doesn't happen in Europe. How, how important is it to ha- be a head coach before being a like? Like, how much do you learn from a, being a head coach compared to an assistant? Like well, uh, it's obviously it, it accelerates the process. I mean, there is nothing which is impossible to do, but uh, uh, having different experiences uh, definitely make it faster because mm-hmm. you have a you have a different you have been in the, the other position. You know what you can ask to your assistant coaches. You know what is their view. You you are looking at things from a different standpoint I mean for sure is making you richer mentally mm-hmm. and, and, and more open to, to, to mm-hmm. diversity yeah how, how good of a year was 2019 for you just winning the, the championship and then obviously the World Cup well uh, <laughs> it was best year of your life <laughs> unbelievable yeah I mean I, I have been blessed with the with uh, coaching many winning teams, but uh, that's definitely probably the the, the most the, the brightest because I mean we're, we're both were unexpected mm-hmm. because in both cases we were not even the top four of uh, of the you know preseason odds mm-hmm. and uh, you know ranking or whatever. But it was a was a growth. It was a process where we were getting confidence, um, you know, more and more. As long as as we were, you know, staying together, playing together, competing together, and actually, it didn't become a surprise when we were there mm. and we felt like we had a chance. We probably in both cases had matured the feeling that they were we were really in a special situation where things were really going in the right direction, the chemistry was great, the, 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 the overall efficiency was, was getting better and better, and we basically end up being in the, in the you know, semi-finals or finals, like, uh, man, we deserve to be here, mm-hmm. we are good enough to be here, let's do it. Uh, what what do you remember about the 2019 Raptors team, and, and what do you think made it such a good team in your mind? Well, I think we had a good starting, uh, you know, organization. The, 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 there was a lot of enthusiasm, uh, new coach. Uh, the organization itself is is, is good. Um, you know, by default, I mean they were they were solid. They were they were very st- well structured with the, with a good, uh, um, I would say, personnel uh, definition. Mm-hmm. Like who's the leader? Who's 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 right behind him? Who's in charge of everything? I mean, it was was good from that point of view. Nick brought a lot of enthusiasm and passion. He, he knew. What uh, it should be, it should uh, it should be changed a little bit, fixed from the past. Um, I think the the trade, uh, the Kawhi. Tra- I mean, uh, the front office did a wonderful job with the two trades. Mm-hmm. So bringing in Kawhi first and Mark after, those were the, the big moves, mm-hmm. which uh, for sure changed our situation from a. You know, contender to a, to a really candidate yeah. to win in the championship. Um, what was it like to, to coach Kyle Lowry? Because I know a lot of people, he, he's not necessarily known as the easiest for coaches. What was that like to coach him? Well, listen, I had a great time. Yeah. And, 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 and at the same time, I can tell you that, the, as I was telling you, the first weeks were like, wow. This, this guy <laughs> is, is different from anyone I coached before. But I think that Kai probably is the guy, let alone Serge Ibaka or Marga Sol, which mm-hmm. I had already coached them, I knew them from before. But probably is the guy whom I have established uh, 
uh, a, a you know closer professional relationship with and even personal one because um, he was the one who was kept, 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 was you know keeping on telling me hey you got to raise your voice you got to oh, really? give your opinion you because you you are a head coach whatever you say is always appropriate so he he, he was encouraging me mm-hmm. to 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 you know to to say what I what I was saying yeah. and to advise coaches and to advise players and uh, and then of course there were there were other players but I think he was the one who my I, I felt uh, closer and whom I felt also that he was more supportive towards mm. me mm. in in, uh, in a way in the in that kind of a delicate and difficult uh, initial stage when you are you know getting, getting into a new organization new team with a new role mm-hmm. brain everything was completely new for me so yeah. it was very helpful and obviously later that that summer you won with mark uh just tell me a bit about what it's been like for you to, to coach spain for so long you've been so successful and maybe a little bit about marcus all just with, with him in, in 19 uh just winning two championships with him essentially well you know um for me, coaching Spain is is establishing uh, a culture more than winning champ. We may, we we won many medals, the Olympic, World, uh, European. But I think that uh, the the really decisive part, the most crucial part of of uh, of the work was to establish a culture from the under 12 to the main mm. team and, and, and making them grow in the same way with the same value, with the same system with the same principle um, and make this way easier for the kids to, to make the, the step to the, to the next stage to the next age and get it to the main team prepared and ready and, 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 and this, was re- this is really what I feel more proud of yeah. Um, and Mark is a part of it because Mark, Mark is one of the absolutely best game uh, student and analyzer that I have met. I have met. I have coached. He's, he's a really computer. He's, he looks emo- and he's an emotional guy. He has a lot. He looks like he's more of a heart guy than, than a brain guy. But he's he's a really really his his heart is is unbelievable. He could remember what that guy seven years ago did in that specific <laughs> set with it's crazy. Yeah. And he's an unbelievable basketball mind. At the same time, he's a, he's a winner because he's a team player. I mean, never. Uh, I mean, he becomes selfish when he wants to establish the right way. To, to play as a team, which is most of the time his way, mm-hmm. comparing with more selfish ways of people who want to, you know, show off or at the ball or take take bad shots. Then when it becomes like, no, now we do what I say we, we need yeah, to do, yeah. but that way is always the right way. It's yeah. always the sharing the ball, it's always playing defense, it's always communicating, it's always stay together. So it was another extremely big support and I think in the championship in the, 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 the championship year with the Raptors that, that trade really made a big change in terms of becoming a very competitive team not mm-hmm. necessarily because we had good, good players also in the roster I mean I'm talking about all the nexus now I'm talking about the team culture the team the mm-hmm. team spirit the team identity mm-hmm. um, with that um, for you Sergio obviously you Talk about being in the NBA and obviously coaching Spain and, and, and in the FIBA game. What's the biggest difference for you in how you approach coaching between FIBA rules or just even a national team and the NBA? Well, there are different words. I mean, there is a there is a you know FIBA team clubs, let's say mm-hmm. uh, competition. Then there is national team. Then there is the NBA. Um, basketball is basketball. If you are if you are good in something, you will f- you normally figure it out. Mm-hmm. Of course, you need to to learn a little, and you need to be humble to learn the other way, to to learn the differences, to 
to accept that you might change something, uh, but you never you don't need to change your your main values, your core principles, because if you do that, probably you are you are not not being not gonna be good. Mm -hmm. Because if if you are good, is because of what you have done, especially uh, as I said on the on the really really uh, you know cornerstones of your of your. Um, View yeah. philosophy of you. <coughs> what would you say those are for you, Sergio? Is it passing the ball, or like sharing the ball, or what well, would you say your philosophy is, or if you have one? Basically, it's like um, uh, be flexible when uh, when uh, it's possible to. Don't, don't, and, and be solid in your principle. Mm -hmm. So be open to listen and to change your perspective or your decisions um, when you realize that uh, it's only your ego mm -hmm. which is preventing you from changing your mind, which is which happens. Yeah. And and this is the risk when you become kind of a successful coach. You get a be very careful that, that you don't perceive yourself like the one who knows everything because mm -hmm. it's completely wrong way. So, but at the same time, uh, principles are principles, and uh, you cannot be like I have good principle if you don't like them. I have yeah. another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can just go to the, to no, yeah. no, you got to be solid. You know what? Because people in the organization in the team needs you like this. They need need you to set the, to set the tone, to to give guidelines, to to you know to be the one who's when is the the clutch time, when is a tough time, when when they they don't need someone who make a. a Put things at vote yeah, yeah. about it. No, they they need. They, there is a point where where people need someone to, who make decision, mm -hmm. and this is it comes by experience a lot, by mistakes, and also being like, uh, um, you know, before making your 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 final decision about the point, before getting that, be open, mm -hmm. being open and, and accept different different views. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to ask you about your obviously here with Spain. How? What are the expectations for you guys at this World Cup? Obviously, you could win today. You played later tonight against Brazil. Just what are the expectations for you guys? Well, of course, um, we our path has been has been tricky because we basically in the last few years never had a top level, uh, let's say, top player. Top NBA player, like, like many other teams have, or top Euroleague players, we don't. Um, but we we build up a strong uh, culture, strong identity, a good togetherness. The system is quite quite interiorized by by the players. The players grow, and we brought up a lot of young kids coming from our, you know, U16, U18, U20 program. Um, and, and, and we are, you know, keeping keeping on on doing this because we have some new generation coming up too. So I mean, um, our strength is how we play as a team, mm -hmm. how we we perform as a team, how we are we are together in the good moment, the difficult moment. We know that uh, there are eight teams. Uh, Talent-wise, from the individual standpoint, uh, definitely better than us. And we we don't. I mean, we are not uh, jealous. <laughs> we are not. Uh, we don't feel offended to recognize it. But at the same time, we know that uh, the game knowledge of our player is high, and this definitely allows the coach to to be quite uh, uh, you need to dare to dare wow. to okay. do to do different things with the team because the base of the of the IQ is high in that we are competitive and it's gonna be tough to beat us because this is 
already inside our our nature. Then you have to work on, on, on it every day because if you just go with complacency and, and think that uh, uh, that's you take it for given, you are you are starting uh, you know your your way down. But if you, we keep feeding that that those principles which are making us a little bit different because we are. A, I mean, we. I'm Italian, but Spain is a 40 million yeah. um, people country where where basketball is not the number one sport, where the the, uh, the bodies are not necessarily uh, suited for, for for basketball. I mean, there are many countries where there are more people playing, more athleticism, more size, but uh, we know what makes us. Different, and I see that several several countries around federations basically are trying to work their programs, kind of uh, getting some inspiration from from what we do. Perfect. I, I was going to ask you about that a little bit, so you gave me a great segue. Um, just Jordy, obviously we just saw him. What I, I know he was an assistant coach. I think Canada might be trying to play more of a Spanish FIBA style, but. Just for you, what's your relationship with like with Jordy, and when you maybe you might have to play against him in the second round, and what would it mean to you to, to coach him, and what's it, what are the challenges if you coach someone that you know very well? Well, I think he knows me better than uh, because because uh, you you really get to know someone. Uh, I mean, I consider him as a friend. We were together. Uh, with the national team, but then we kept our relationship and we strengthened our relationship later on. Yet to step step out because uh, of uh, of family reason. Yet uh, you know his wife was pregnant. Uh, was a, was a time. And fortunately, the kids are beautiful and uh, they, everything was great. So, but at the time they were a little bit concerned. Um, and I understood it because that's that's uh, you know first is first. But we kept our relationship, uh, you know, uh, open, frank. We are sharing many many feelings, and and uh, uh, we had several situations where we were very open, even more than than how usually. Coaches are. coaches are because there is always kind of a. Why was that, Sergio? Why do you think more openness? But because because there is a confidence there. Mm. There is a mutual confidence. He knows, and I prove him uh, that uh, he can trust me mm -hmm. for for the advice I can give him, and I and and he proven I can trust him for what I can tell him. So there is a extremely open relationship, and and. Uh, and uh, and of course there is a base of uh, of uh, respect and consideration for the quality mm. of uh, of uh, the other person. I mean, I, I consider him as I always said that he was going to be uh, the, the next new head coach, European head coach in the, in the NBA. Uh, well, Darko surprised me a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Was I, I thought Jordi could be could be the the next, but it was yeah. it was a good uh, for sure a good choice also from uh, from the red, which proved their their openness and, yeah. and their their. Yeah. But uh, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's going to be the next, and um, and and I think that he's going to be a very good very good head coach in the NBA, definitely. And, how and now and, and for sure he's already proven that he's able to. Put together the two souls, right? Mm -hmm. the, the NBA um, identity of the team, because the, the most of them are NBA yeah. players. Yeah, yeah. Talk, 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 yeah. I mean, it's even top NBA players. But at the same time, they are they are uh, you know reaching a good way to to be together, and that little uh, I will say I won't call it selfish. But I would say individualist mm. uh, way that sometimes uh, NBA is, which is not always the perfect way to approach the international game, is not there with Canada. I mean, you can you can feel that there, and I think this is for sure. You got to give uh, credit to to Jordi, credit to to the 
federation and credits to Nick, with who who uh, started to the, the program, uh, you know, with with the experience, using the experience of what what he learned in his in his European time. And what, what if you are to play Canada, just what kind of challenge that like you've talked about the individualism, but also now they seem to be coming together. What type of challenge would it be for you guys in Spain? Well, you got to play. You got to be good. Um, playing them offensively because they are so strong, so athletic, so good defensively. They, they. Uh, I mean, you don't want to feed their offense because of your offensive mistakes. I mean, you have to be good in your decision making, your shot selection, in controlling turnovers because they are really challenging from the defensive uh, standpoint. And then they have, I mean, yeah. I'm talking about top, Shea. top players, Shea for sure. But the, the other guys are, are are smart and they are they are find their role. Look like they they found their role within the team, which allows them, allows them to probably uh, looks more of a, of an international team from some with with an NBA. A level of uh, yeah. of uh, you know physicality and, and talent. Mm -hmm. Well, um, thank you so much for, for doing this, Sergio. Uh, I really appreciate it. I just I know that you're an inter. Are you an inter? -Milan? I am. How, how did you feel about the Champions League final? I just have to ask you about that. Well, and making it that that. Uh, <laughs> it was a tricky afternoon. It was a tricky night because uh, in basically ten minutes I get a call from. <laughs> From my agent, that uh, uh, even if we were, I was close to the Raptors' job. They finally they they had picked up Darko, and seven minutes later, the city city made the city score. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it was ten 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 curious minutes, tricky minutes okay. of my of my life. <laughs> but I'm I feel proud. I mean, Inter is not one of the top eight. Okay. Team by by budget or by by ranking, so making it to the final was a, and, and we play a hell of a game. I mean, it was, it was, was completely. It looked like yeah, I, we I, were not the, the, the I thought you were gonna get it after the first half. Yeah, we were there. We were there, but uh, I mean, you had to be also smart enough to understand that, that there was something. Which doesn't happen every year. So when it mm -hmm. happens, you have to enjoy it, and, and, and hopefully, I was in in 2010 in Madrid when we oh, won yeah. the the Champions League Lido. back then, yeah. and uh, it was an unbelievable emotion. And then it was 13 years later, and was way way unexpected. Mm -hmm. So it means that probably the the, the I mean the more respectable uh, let's say rhythm. Could have been 20, 25 years later. <laughs> so we are still. We, we were. We were ahead of time. We were. Well, I don't know. I'm. I'm. I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't think so. But we'll see. Well, thank you so much. No problem. So thanks to everyone for for listening to these interviews. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Sergio and and Bruno were amazing. Hope to have some more contact coming out later this week and throughout the tournament and remember like subscribe please uh if you can uh check out my podcast uh, my personal one behind the play um i've had a lot of cool people in the nba i hope to have brian windhorst and ramona shelburne and om young masuk i've had on howard beck uh blake murphy a bunch of other nba guys so um please check both of the podcasts out especially one for Raptors Republic, but also mine if you can. And thanks so much. And please like and leave a comment if you enjoyed it and have a great day.